the objective of infant examination is basically well baby clinic not a patient who is a sick uh, pediatric patient but here there are antenatal checkups there are immunizations people are coming uh, for their immunization checkup so usually the infants doesn't have any problem so you need to screen them up whether to and uh, to make sure that there are no problems going on with them so if there is an infant here and uh, you will start infant uh, by taking it into the, into your hand or the mother's hand and then you will have an inspection first what in inspection you can see that is there any from head to toe inspection head to toe inspection includes the facies are there any syndromic picture is there the hair distribution is good the skin is good the eye contact is good the child is fixing the his eyes or her eyes is there any deformities that you could think of are there any low lying ear sets that are there so any syndromic picture which is uh, resembling to down syndrome or a klein filter syndrome just as a common uh, abnormalities and you also need to see the um, uh, the the head the um, the forehead for the frontal bossing this is uh, frontal bossing is a, is again is is found in which disease frontal bossing rickets rickets vitamin d deficiency okay and then you see the is the are there any abnormalities in the eyes are there any abnormalities in the nose or the mouth just as an inspection is the baby is playful uh, is smiling or uh, is crying is okay uh, is the baby moving all his four limbs or is avoiding one of the limbs so that you may have an idea that probably there is some kind of um, uh, dislocation or some kind of trauma that has happened during the deliveries it might affect the baby child's movement the tone of all the four limbs is the baby is uh, moving all the four limbs or not and um, the then from the chest if you see there is are there any uh, respiratory movement <clears throat> you are also able to see any congenital abnormalities in within the nipples you can also see the respiratory rate the use of the accessory muscles then you examine then you inspect the abdomen for any bulging uh, any uh, any hernia orifices and if the child is crying or making some noise you can also have a look of the inguinal uh, inguinal uh, spaces to have any um, bulgings over there then here in the genitalia you will see that uh, the genitalia is male or female or ambiguous or are there any abnormalities there or not then uh, you can see the foot you have some uh, if, uh, the any abnormalities in the uh, fingers or not just as a gross so this is about the inspection so once you're done with the inspection what you're going to do is then you will start your um, examination from the head again and then this is for the palpation so you will see first in the um, on the head you will see the frontal uh, anterior fontanel and then the posterior fontanel is it open or not open if it is open what is the size of that anterior fontanel is it depressed or elevated if it is depressed it can uh, think of you can think of dehydration if it is bulging you can think of maybe uh, hydrocephalus or raised intracranial pressure and then you will need to see the size of the anterior fontanel whether the size is 1.5 to 2.5 this is this is okay uh, generally speaking you uh, measure it from the finger for from the finger lines uh, 1 to 1.5 cm is one finger line so based on this you will measure that the anterior fontanel is open it is wide or not wide if it is more wide then you could think of hypothyroidism rickets vitamin d deficiency and if it is closed or not closed depending on whatever what is the age of the infant then hair distribution on the head and then you will see the uh, ear sets 
is it low lying ear set or normal ear set low lying ear set is from the eyes you will draw an imaginary line and see that the ear lobe is ending bare so if the ear lobe is ending below that line that means it's uh, the ear sets are low lying and then you can see the mouth in the mouth you can uh, comment on uh, the uh, the general hygiene or uh, you can comment on the palates and then you will uh, obviously after washing your hands you will insert your maybe little finger and you touch the heart palate of the child as soon as you touch the heart palate of the child the child will start suckling so that means you will see the suckling reflex and then you you examining the suckling reflex number one number second thing is is the palate is open or is it closed and then uh, you will see the rooting reflex you put your fingers inside and then you make the this finger out and then put it in the angle of the mouth and the child can relocate your uh, your fingers in order to get grasp it so this is the rooting reflex and then you go into the neck uh, on the neck you will see any bulging any uh, thyroglossal cyst uh, any midline uh, bulging or any sideline bulgings or you can see the neck uh, whether it's um, in the client filter syndrome it's a web neck problem so you can identify that and uh, is there any abnormalities within the neck you can uh, you can think of just the general neck shape and any visible pulsation or any bulgings is it midline if there's a bulging is it midline or sideline is it moving not moving just on the comments if you have these kind of bulgings present so this is about the neck and then you are going to the chest uh, you will have a comment on the on the nipples on the chest wall the chest shape barrel shaped or um, uh, not a barrel shaped uh, ap diameter versus the transverse diameter is it okay do you see any further bulgings do you see any further pulsation pulsa pulsation within the chest wall and you can have a palpation on the chest wall just to see for general tenderness or crepitations or things like that so this is the comment on the chest so with this you are you will now uh, you can now uh, auscultate the chest for the uh, for the crackles or edit sounds within the chest wall so that's uh, related to any respiratory problems and then you can at the same time within the chest you will you are going to uh, inspect you are going to auscultate the child's um, precordium and uh, you will have just the um, just the auscultation of the precordial area aortic pulmonary mitral tricuspid so will uh, you will have an um, uh, you will have an idea that whether this child has infant has any added sounds or not so you are just doing remember that you are not doing it you are not doing a very extensive focused systemic examination but you are doing it just for the sake of screening so you and as you uh, notice that we are not going to each of the detailed components of the cardiovascular system and the chest system we are doing head to toe examination to, in order to screen any abnormality so in the chest you do auscultation palpation in the cvs you would just to precord you are just required to do precordium up in the eyes what we have forgotten is the eye shape eye color and uh, then there is a, a thing called red reflex if you have for for instance this is the ophthalmoscope you will just uh, throw a light on both of the eyes that the uh, red eye reflex for the red eye reflex uh, you will find out that the red eye reflex is present or red eye reflex is not present if the red eye reflex is not present it is a uh, it is a problem of congenital cataract or retinoblastoma okay now uh, with the eyes we are done just have an uh, external morphology comments on the ears you don't usually check the ear with the otoscopes in infants if there are indication then you can done with the chest then you can have comment on the on the upper limbs the shoulder are there any bulgings or dislocations 
and then you can see elbows are uh, the joints are good uh, uh, wrist the joints are good or not fingers uh, five fingers are present or four fingers are present or some fusions some comments on the nails uh, some comments on the palms for palmer for palmer creases for down syndromes and uh, just crossly speaking and um, yes for the rest we are also concerned about the uh, wrist widening so whenever you do uh, the wrist widening you will uh, with the child you will move your hand and on the uh, on the wrist you will find out that there are there are bulging the the wrist is widening at the joint so this is wrist widening so wrist widening is suggestive of vitamin d deficiency again so we have a screen for two signs of vitamin d deficiency one is the wrist widening and the other is the frontal bossing so once you are done with the upper limb chest and you will move to the abdomen and abdomen obviously on inspection we have already said about the bulging about the umbilical shape about the hernial orifices and then you will do some palpation general palpation of the abdomen the whole abdomen palpation and then is there any mass is there any tenderness or is there any guarding or and you can check for just liver or have a comment on spleen or just the general uh, any one or two visceral uh, uh, checking for the visceromegalies grossly if you think that if you see that there are the 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 umbilicus is bulging and getting something out then obviously you must need to see whether what is it is it a hernia or what is it is it an obstructed hernia non obstructed hernia things like that but you can have a comment on the shape of the umbilicus then you will go down on this you will see the um, hernial orifices for any bulging you see the genitalia is the genitalia is good for the males the um, penis have the right opening or it is epispadiasis or hypospadiasis uh, is the is the shaft is uh, purely separated from the uh, scrotum or is it merged so these kind of things is the testis descended or not if not then you need to comment on that are there any fluid accumulated in the scrotum that you need to comment yeah hydrocel if there the female is there then you will uh, you will have a comment on the gross um, uh, vaginal orifices is it open or not closed or small or are there any other specific bulgings that you may want to have a comment then you go into the uh, downwards to the lower limbs you will see that the uh, your child is moving the limbs and uh, for the hip joint now you are in the uh, inguinal region you do the genitalia examination after that you also have a comment on the femoral vessels or pulses in the inguinal area and then you will do a test called developmental dysplasia of the hip joint ddh so this is you what you, how you are going to do it you uh, with the one hand and with the thumb you put the thumb on the knee joint you put the index finger on the hip joint you flex it and then you abduct it and externally rotate it and now you will again reflex it um, uh, internally rotate it adduct it and uh, extend it so while you are doing this you are actually manually dislocating the joint so if there is a click then obviously there is a uh, dislocation and if when you do it like that if you see a click it's a sign for referral uh, it probably has a developmental dysplasia of the hip joint this is called ottolani's and barlow's one is ottolani procedure and the other is barlow's procedure no yeah relocation you do it like this you do it one by one or you can do it both at the same time both at the same time uh for this uh, uh yes for this uh, uh, uh for the hip joint developmental dysplasia of the hip joint if there is a click generally speaking uh, you need to do 
an uh, ultrasound or you need to refer the patient to the orthopedic to see whether the patient has this developmental dysplasia of the hip joint or not so you're not really sure but this is an indication for referral to get the to seek the help of the specialist why is this important because when the child is growing up when he started to walk and if you do not detect it at this moment of time because it's not going to detect because the child is there's no pain and the child is not walking so you don't know so when he reaches to uh, two years three years and, and then he started to limping and then you will realize that this limping is because of that this ddh developmental dysplasia and you miss that at that point at that moment there will be very the older the child is the worse the prognosis would be so you need to early detect it so that this is not going to cause any structural deformity or any limping in the child in the later childhood and then you will go to the just to check for the knee joints the is it moving good or not mobile or not then you will have a comment on the foot the foot fingers are normal number normal in numbers are there any fusions um, are there nails good uh, or there are any deformities in the nails also you just need to have a comment on that and then you will also need to have a comment on uh, on the flat foot whether the child is flat foot or not and then you can also have a comment on the child's foot position whether is it clubbed foot or not right there are child who has everted deformities so is there any clubbed foot or not flat foot or not the movement on the ankle joint is it mobile or not so this is how you comment on the foot so we are coming from head to toe front is complete now you will go to back you flip the child and when when you flip the child you will re, you will note that the child started to lift his head like this in the upward position so this is head lag is a better head lag so what is the position of the head lag is it better or not better depending on what is the age of the child you can also you you would also like to assess the head lag by lifting the whole both hands and and then pulling it on your words so that you will see that the child is having head lag or no head lag depending on what is the age so head lag can be examined from the front and you can also observe the head lag when you have uh, flipped the child up and then uh, from the posteriorly you will have a comment on the back generally the shape the spine is it midline is it deviated to laterally right or laterally left and um, is there any bulging hair in the um, uh, in the quad equina yeah size spina bifida uh, for the spina bifida is there any bulging they are present or not and then you will have a comment on the buttocks the oral orifices in a low um, uh, orifices is, is is open or not in a opening is open or not and then uh, you have a general comment on the back is there any findings present on the back or not once you've done it and make sure that you have auscultated the child after you're done your auscultation you can do these examinations if you think that the child is more comfortable on the lap of the mother you can do the same examination mother holding the child and you can do from head to toe examination with the child uh, that the mother holding the child no problem with that infant no, no problem with that because as soon as you take the child and uh, take the infant and keep it on the couch and the child the infant is going to cry so if that's if that's okay feasible you do it on the lap of the mother after you're done with your examination and make sure that you auscultate the um the chest for the cvs and for the chest examination maybe on the lap of the mother because the child is, the infant is going to cry so when you're done with your head to toe examination front head to toe examination back and then what you can do is uh, you will take the child here or you can do like this so this is for the moros this is the moros reflex whenever you take the child uh, you just drop it and uh, put it like this so the child will have a certain uh, extension of his hands and feet and then he will uh, and he will obviously he will have to cry this is the last thing that you're going to do 
When you do this, the child is going to cry out naturally. When the child started crying, you will or you will have the second chance to have a comment on the inguinal orifices for any bulging. Because when the child is crying, this is the opportunity where you can get the forceful expiration and it will have a strain over here and then you can diagnose the child with um, with the bulgings in the inguinal region. So this is how you are going to assess the infant in the uh, in the well baby clinic. Uh, within the well baby clinic you are going to assess the screen the child for the examination for any uh, systemic problems, eye problems, whatever whatsoever, general look of the child. In the well baby clinic there are three aspects. One is the examination, inspection as we just did, number one. Number second thing is what is the status of the immunization? Is it up to date, not up to date, missed, partially missed? How are you going to assess for the immunizations? We will discuss later on. The third thing is milestones. Is the child is achieving milestones or not? Is it a six month old child or a 10 month old child or a nine month old child? Depending on that, you need to assess for the milestones that he is or she is achieving. The other thing is nutrition. Is it the breastfeed, not breastfeed, the weight, gaining weight is good or not, malnutrition, obese, just to the mark. So these are all things that you need to assess in a well baby clinic when the child is coming to you just for a normal follow-up, doesn't have any problem. Okay, so that's about the infant examination in the well baby clinic.